So welcome everybody to the third workshop of the Hasanda consultation series. Um, today we're going to be discussing the draft information scope for Hasanda um, and discussing how it aligns with current practices and therefore its feasibility. So to begin, I'd first like to acknowledge and celebrate the first Australians on whose traditional lands we meet and we pay our respect to the oldest past and present. So again, today's workshop is going to run for 90 minutes. Um, there's been a slight change to the program for today. There'll just be two presentations uh, to begin with rather than the three that were in the, um, in the email that was sent out to you all. Uh, so we'll begin with Adrian, who's going to update us on the feedback that we've received so far via these workshops uh, and be discussing how your feedback has developed into a draft information scope for the national data asset. Uh, we'll be seeking your thoughts on the draft and its feasibility. And so our second presentation uh, will be from Martin Ustendorp, who will explain how the NHMRC Clinical Trials Centre records and shares their trials data. Um, Martin is currently, uh, has kindly agreed to do this and we wanted to give you all an idea of the kind of detailed feedback we're after from this workshop. Um, so. Uh, that's the purpose of, of that presentation, to give an example of that kind of feedback. Um, and actually today, before we go into our breakout session, we'll be doing a brief Q&A after the talk, so please make sure to pop your questions into the chat channel. A quick reminder, uh, your mics will be muted for the presentations, of course they'll be switched off um, once we get into the breakout sessions. So on screen now, at the focus questions we'll be asking during uh, during the breakout sessions. Uh, you'll have a copy of these and a copy of the survey for today's workshop in the reference document that you were emailed. Um, so please refer back to that. And in fact, completing the survey is going to be especially valuable for us on this topic as we need to record a lot of granular detail about your current practices. Um, it's not so much your opinions on X, Y, or Z, but really um, ticket boxes to, you know, which which particular uh, methods, or approaches, technologies do you use? Um, so unlike previous feedback forms and surveys that we've used, there's a lot less free text questions and we hope it's going to be a lot more straightforward and quicker for you to complete. Um, also, thank you to everyone who's already completed the survey. Uh, we're actually going to be reporting on some of those initial trends that we're seeing in those responses and we may as well get onto that uh, as soon as possible. So I'll hand over to Adrian now, um, who will provide an update on the feedback we've received from the consultations thus far, and some of the conclusions that we've started drafting based on that. So Adrian, I'll hand over to you. Okay. Welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Adrian Burton. I work at the ARDC. The ARDC is convening this whole set of uh, data development uh, workshops. Uh, we've been helped by the AIHW in uh, the methodology of um, developing uh, the sort of specifications, if you like, for a national data asset here. And the Hassander Initiative is a is a broad um, a broad based initiative. We have input from a steering committee that includes the NHMRC, ARA, ACTA, the ANZ, uh, CTR, as well as Research Australia and Cochrane Australia. We are in the middle of this process. Um, I think you recall from last time we're here, we are at Theme C, our third workshop in this data development uh, series. We started off looking at the research purpose, uh, looking then at the specific data that would be, that would support that purpose. And here we are at number three, we identified that data, then what are the current sort of existing standards and practices related to that data. Uh, as you know, at the end of this process, we'll be there and therefore be able to specify or sketch out some broad business requirements for health studies, Australian national data asset, Hassander, 
and we'll take that in two directions. One will be for further consultation more broadly with uh, trial participants and uh, the research community more broadly, as well as taking those requirements to a, a set of partners, institutions who will be um, willing to uh, build in an infrastructure that could support this. But here we are today in theme C, just asking you questions about uh, the existing data standards and practices. So these are the things that we talked about last time that were, that were cut the themes that were emerging out of the uh, this data development consultation process. Um, but these are the propositions, the value propositions that people were seeing to provide some kind of a platform, a standardized platform for accessing uh, clinical trial data sets and then to provide more coherence and coordination across the sector around those information products from research projects uh, and that that standardization would, would really contribute to some quite substantial uh, efficiencies and productivities and even innovation of new types of research that could be uh, supported. So if you remember we then asked you know what kinds of use could be made of such an asset and uh, there was a number came out we've now really highlighted in blue here the ones that uh, have been reconfirmed through the second workshop uh, around your know, meta-analysis systematic review replication reproducibility as well as secondary research projects these ones really have been confirmed as a uh, as specific key three three key research purposes the other purposes are obviously remain important but if you kind of look at it in the from the perspective of the of the workflow of science you you, you do those three on the left and they would en enable you through translational research to um, do some of the things on the in the right hand side there. Anyway, the, the take home here is that these are the big areas of research that uh, are looking to, uh, to be quite achievable uh, through uh, an Australian national data asset. Uh, some of the key information needs that, that people require there, they are also becoming, uh, the, there's themes that are coming out of our feedback that the study protocols, the individual participant level data and the, the other descriptions of the data like the data dictionaries that they are the key information needs. From last, last workshop, um, people were saying that on top of that, uh, they're another of uh, nice to haves, including something to do with the data quality as well as the, um, the data sharing and um, uh, availability statements. Um, specifically we've really focused in on the the value of uh, um, individual patient data and the requirements kind of suggest that uh, it needs to be clear if the entire data set or a subset or an extract of the data set is available um, and then really having a look to see whether any of the fields have uh, incomplete or have been um, uh, so these are really now we're focusing in, in on some of the specific re um, requirements around individual patient data um, some other key needs there that um, stuff that would be nice to have is you know the um, be nice to have all this stuff through a specific, you know, through a, just make it easier to find them. Uh, any guidance through this initiative, if the coordination and coherence of this initiative can uh, provide guidance around standards, that will be a, a big um, step forward, as would be any templates for recording this key information. Um, and then um, the, on the right hand side there, there's an, uh, a number of templates that are emerging as um, the key ways in which this kind of information is collected. 
So I guess that's where we've got to now is that um, there is a kind of information scope for the Hassanda initiative. It's really focusing in on the uh, individual patient data, the study protocol, the data dictionaries, as well as statistical analysis and unpublished uh, outcomes. But it's the first three there that are the, re the, the key focus that uh, is emerging out of the um, consultation so far. There's another a number of other information artifacts that are in already in the ecosystem, uh, information that's already been registered with the uh, clinical registries, stuff that might be in ethics information systems and stuff that might be taken out from uh, publications related to the study. Um, and all of that together is the broader ecosystem. And if we're talking about Hassanda bringing together the important data outputs of a clinical trial, then it would be great if we could uh, leverage from some of the existing information rather than having people uh, having to copy that stuff that's already, for example, in a trial registry. We don't want to have people to copy that a second time. All right. Um, so for today's workshop, we've got a couple of questions around that. So having focused in on these particular data assets, now the question really is it's around feasibility. What are the exacting, what are the uh, existing information workflows? What do people do with these, you know, with the uh, IPD, with the study protocols, with the data dictionaries? What is the existing information practices around them? Uh, is it feasible to collect these, these as sort of first class outputs of projects? Uh, what would people be looking for if you were going to reuse them? What can we expect uh, from the data producers uh, as normal practice? So there, there, that's what where we are. That's where we are now in the, in the kind of workflow of this data development. You know, what are the current practices around the, uh, the information artifacts that, that we're looking to, to build into a national data asset. And we did send around, uh, related to this workshop, there is a, a, a survey and we've sent that around. I encourage you all to fill out that survey. Here are some of the very preliminary results. It's very early feedback, so don't take this as final, but um, if you can, um, fill out this survey, this will help to um, sort of uh, really um, for us to converge on some of these important outcomes. So here's a couple of examples. So the question is, how do you currently access uh, trials information? And these are the, at the bottom, they're the different uh, types of trial uh, information. So for example, how do you currently access trials information if we look at IPD, how do people usually do that? By far the winner here is the orange column and that's via direct contact with the clinical trialist. And in fact, if you look across all the different trial information types, uh, orange is by far the winner so far in the early feedback. So that's an early um, sort of trend that's coming out of the, the first responses to the, to the um, survey. Now, if you go back, do you remember we, uh, we, in the initial consultations, we were saying that a standardized way of accessing trial data is the key value proposition for Hassanda, and this is starting to uh, show why that is, in, is that if people are accessing, currently accessing trials information, it is restricted to uh, co direct contact with a clinical trialist. So that means that it's really dependent on existing social networks or existing contacts or ferreting out contacts where they exist. Um, so this is a really uh, nice um, confirmation that, that there actually is a, a good value in us being a lot more coordinated and coherent about um, accessing this information. So anyway, these are just to show you that there is some uh, um, early feedback. Other things which have come out of the early feedback is 
about, so the first question was about, you know, people who are reusing information, how do they do it? This question here is about, uh, if you're a trialist, do you actually record information about the trial registration, about the protocol, about the dictionary? So in all these areas, there is a pretty good um, indications that people are um, recording this kind of information, uh, except for the unpublished trial outcomes. Um, again, on the early feedback, just to the, the kind of questions that we're asking here, Green is what we currently do and blue is what you'd prefer to do. So for example, um, for IPD, how would you uh, make that available? I would make it available via my institution's servers and shared drives is overwhelmingly how it's done. For the blue, how would you like to do it? Well, uh, I'd much prefer to have a formal repository or via uh, a registry. So again, here are some um, sort of early indications and most of them are uh, between the green and the blue. They're moving away from just a, a drive, you know, or a USB stick that I keep my stuff on and people would like to move towards um, some kind of more formal repository kind of arrangement. So for today's workshop, uh, apart from those kind of questions that are in the uh, in the survey, we'd really like you to look at these kind of questions. Um, you know, what kind of standardization would be desirable or is possible? Uh, and what kind of elements, uh, what kind of, what are the key elements of each of these um, clinical trial data outputs? that uh, would be required. Um, so I think that's probably where we will leave it. Uh, in general, what we're trying to get out of today is um, the specific scope of uh, the, the data scope that we're starting to see emerge for Hassanda. Will that miss, meet the, rest of the needs of future researchers? Is it possible, is the second dot point, does it align with existing data practices? Is it possible to, to pull that kind of information out of uh, clinical trials? And does that information scope require refinement? So they're the, the, the key things that we're looking for at this stage of the um, consultation. So I'll just hand back to Kristen then. Uh, stop sharing. Thank you. Great, thanks a lot Adrian for that. And I think at this point, uh, we'll hand over to Martin. And just a reminder that we will be doing a Q and A if people have questions uh, following Martin's presentation, please do pop them in chat. Okay, over to you. Thanks very much, Kristen. And um, let me just find my screen here. Um, so as Kristen said, I work for the NHMRC Clinical Trial Center of the University of Sydney and um, we're, uh, an expertise center for um, design and conduct of clinical trials um, with some um, additional um, departments in our team that also look into health economics review, uh, translation into practice, translational research, etc. So data sharing is certainly um, a relevant topic in our organization. Um, my role in the organization is a, of a trials program manager. So I look after a team that um, coordinates and manages the, the operational aspects of the clinical trials. And uh, in my case, for a portfolio of oncology studies. So I was asked the question, I guess, based for the, from the survey. Um, so do you record um, the following information and what standard procedures or templates do you use? And the short answer really is yes to all. Um, as a clinical trial um, uh, environment, heavily regulated, so you really need to abide by the core principle of say what you do and do what you say. Um, that uh, is then uh, further worked out in uh, GCP and other um, guidelines and regulations. Um, so for all the items listed in that question, 
we do have standard operating procedures and um, for the majority under those we have underlying templates checklist systems etc to um, to operationalize those if you will um, so just going through this, the various items we um, register all our clinical trials prospectively that's required by the the editorials and the journals uh, nowadays, uh, most commonly we use ANZ-CTR um, and we use that questionnaire um, online. Um, so there's no dedicated other tool than that. It's very useful. I would uh, highly recommend that using it. Um, Clintrials.gov and, and some others um, uh, are used as well. We do have a study protocol template um, and a checklist and that's to ascertain that all the essential elements of our study protocol are captured. Um, ours is based largely on um, the spirit uh, statement. So um, if you're still looking for a, a template, that's a great place to start. Transcelerate, um, which is an industry initiative, also has a good resource there. It's a bit more industry focused, but still, if you, you know, it's a good place to start. Um, with regards to data dictionaries or, or the, the data structure, um, we capture all our clinical trial data systems in um, state-of-the-art electronic um, data capture systems. Um, for our better funded larger trials, we use Medidata, Rave and Inform, and those are the, let's say, the, the best systems used throughout the world across industry and academia. Um, for studies with limited budget. We have RedCap and Open Clinica, also tools that um, provide robust data collection and management um, uh, capabilities and have good audit trails to ensure you meet also your regulatory compliance. Um, we do use um, ECRF templates or let's say standard data elements and structures um, throughout those systems. We like to reuse those wherever we can um, and obviously all the, the systems we develop for each trial have their own database specifications usually uh, outlined in an annotated case report form. Um, our templates are loosely based on the CDISC um, uh, data conventions such as their um, standard data tabulation model and their um, standardized data um, elements, C dash. Um, not entirely, in part because um, CDISC only started in the mid 2000s uh, really and it's an ongoing development. It's also not covering every single potential study specific data element, um, but it's again a good basis if you are looking uh, to standardize uh, your data collection across studies. Um, same for the statistical analysis plan. We've got templates for that. Um, and Transcelerate has a good solution there. Maybe a bit more comprehensive for your average industry uh, investigator initiated uh, study, but still um, contains uh, relevant information. Now with unpublished trial outcomes, I didn't really think of a specific item what we collect. We collect all our data. Uh, including outcomes um, in our data systems. So it, it's kind of not applicable, it's more see above. Um, when it comes to sharing that, uh, that's driven by our data sharing uh, and, and publication policy, that um, probably is also the most contentious component. Um, usually you, uh, not many people are keen to share uh, their data until they have adequately published um, the results that um, are underpinned by that data to prevent you know um, missing out on the opportunity to publish yourself um, whenever we share data we do want that captured in data sharing agreements which can be separate agreements or part of an overarching agreement um, as part of the university of sydney our office of legal counsel has templates for all sorts of agreements including that um, the resource I put here, not so much of a, a template, but it's a good article about the benefits and risks of data sharing and the considerations you should give to data sharing plans and what to include in agreements um, can be derived from that. So that's um, 
uh, another good item to look at. And then finally, um, this was not part of the question, but Kristen, you asked me to expand a little bit on that on, you know, do you have also tools in place for actually doing the data sharing? Um, and um, again, yes, we do. Uh, we've got an SOP on transferring data um, with a checklist that, you know, ensures you cover all the elements to ensure that your data ex the transfer is secure and that you actually transfer the data that you wanted to transfer in the right format in, at the right time. Um, in a general process, I guess, the data sitting in those electronic data capture systems that I described in the data dictionary, they are extracted by a programmer or a, a statistician, usually using SAS, and then um, we use a secure data sharing tool, and that can be a, like a, a secure file transfer protocol, like cloud store type solution. Um, it's a bit, there's no fixed single solution for that because often the third parties that want to receive the data will provide such a solution. Um, just a word of caution, there's a lot of free data sharing uh, tools such as uh, Dropbox. Um, and before you start using that for transferring individual patient data, bear in mind that uh, not all of those solutions um, have adequate privacy and security protection. So do confirm that. Um, just to continue a little bit on the clinical trial, when you look at it from an operations point of view, this is by no means a comprehensive um, overview. But I guess from a non-researcher and more looking at the um, clinical trial as a logistical uh, exercise, uh, you can split it up in several phases from early development all the way to close out. And at all these stages, you need to put in place agreements, processes, systems, tools um, to uh, execute that um, study. And when you think of that also in scope of data sharing, um, you know, ideally you already early on identify what your intent is with regards to data sharing. So at the CTC, we do have a data sharing policy um, that's you know, outlines on general terms. Are we in principle willing to share data? And that's, that's assessed on a case by case basis. Um, and if there is already a, an intent for a study to share its data, maybe for a prospective uh, meta-analysis, um, it would be useful already in the protocol template to define that so that your process for doing the trial results in, in good data collection that is suitable for sharing and merging with other data. Um, and that then follows through into your data collection tools. Um, a, a few things, I won't go through all of these because of the time, but you know, some of the key aspects here, I guess, to outline are agreements. Um, on the one hand, you know, if you are going to share data, you should have suitable agreements in place to protect you know, from um, inadvertent use or use uh, beyond, you know, the scope what you're actually entitled to uh, do with the data um, as driven by privacy, security uh, regulations, the participant informed consent, etc. And on the other hand, also pre-existing agreements may limit your ability to share data. Um, if you have a commercial funder, there may be some um, expectation that you will not publicize the data uh, other than for your own research um, before um, that funder had an opportunity to look at it. There's yeah, plenty of reasons um, for limitations there and very important as well in the PIC, um, the, the participant informed consent form, that drives the extent of the data you're allowed to share for that patient. So a patient should really clearly stipulate what level of data you may be sharing to whom and you know what what regions um, then um, I guess that is yeah the data transfer specification which I mentioned is another key thing that you know it's, it's important that you have a good process in place that once you identify that intent um, that it's executed well. I 
like to end with, um, you know, reminding everybody of GCP. I'm sure everybody is very aware of it. But really, what it says is that if you come, you know, set up and, and conduct your trials properly, um, you already have the processes, the systems, and templates in place. Any case to reproduce your trial. And now reproduction is not the same as reusing your trial, but it certainly will facilitate that. So there is an opportunity in, in you know clinical trials, highly regulated, high quality data is usually the outcome. So um, it is probably the type of data sets that are very suitable for reuse. Um, but of course, there's plenty of challenges with that as well. Um, in that, first of all, you've got limitations um, uh, on an agreement level. Um, there's some um, significant work in setting up the process. And certainly if you hadn't prospectively intended to share the data, um, if you have to set up that system post hoc, um, find out with the, you know, the requester on what they actually want and make them understand your data, it's, it's quite time consuming. Um, and I, yes, Adrian already outlined um, a lot of the organizations are looking to these processes, but they all give their own spin to it. So um, there's quite a bit of variability across organizations that makes it um, a bit challenging to align those um, data sets then um, once you're ready to share them. So it's um, an interesting field and um, it's good to see that actually there's a good initiative like this. And I'll very much.